I gave a grand rounds for geriatric medicine to review the research that proves that this makes a difference. And it was entitled Lifestyle Modification as an Active Treatment to Prevent or Delay the Onset of Alzheimer's Disease. Grand rounds, that's educating doctors. We educate ourselves. <laughs> so when I speak to other doctors, you know, who may be generalists, more primary care, they're interested in what I do. And one of the things that I do is give a lot of advice, not just to patients, but to family members who are at risk. I'm Dr. George Grossberg. I'm the Henry and Amelia Nasrallah Endowed Professor of Geriatric Psychiatry and Director of the Division of Geriatric Psychiatry here at St. Louis University School of Medicine. In fact, we've developed this Healthy Brain Aging Program. The Healthy Brain Aging Program is not just geared to older adults. It's as much, if not more, geared to their at-risk family members. They want to know, well, gee, you know, now I've got a mom with Alzheimer's. What do I need to do? to decrease my risks of developing it. Now, that's what this is all about. Earlier the better, but it's never too late. Earlier the better would be in the middle years because people who already have Alzheimer's disease can slow disease progression. What can people who have a strong family history who are worried about getting Alzheimer's down the road do now when they're in their middle years? There's risk factors and there's protective factors. So protective factors would be, let's say, um, healthy diet. We recommend the MIND diet, which is the Mediterranean diet with low salt, composed of fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, whole grains, lots of fish, oily fish especially, lean meat, maybe chicken, olive oil, extra virgin cold press olive oil should be the only shortening that one uses. Then other things that are important in lifestyle. So we talk about four spheres of activity that are important for the cardiovascular system, good for the heart, good for the brain, and for the brain. The four activity arenas are physical activity, making sure that you're doing 150 minutes or more a week of some type of exercise. The second sphere of activity is mental activity. You need to keep your brain active, whether it's reading, whether it's doing puzzles or games or older adults watching game shows. We try to guess the right kind of answers to things, but don't be brain dormant. That's bad, okay? The third sphere of activity is spiritual activity. It could be mindfulness, it could be meditation, it could be church activity. Again, those are positive arenas. The fourth area, not in any order of precedence, would be social activity. Don't be a couch potato, don't be a hermit. You know, try to engage with people. Church is another way of engaging if people are involved in that. Then you have all kinds of risk factors. Some risk factors we can't do much about. So we don't yet know how to change our genes. They might be carrying a risk gene for Alzheimer's disease, and we can't do much about that. But there are many things that we can do something about can change the trajectory of things. Risk factors that are modifiable. On the top of the list are any and all cardiovascular risk factors. Because what's bad for the heart, bad for the brain. Things like high blood pressure, hypertension, diabetes, uh, make sure it's well controlled, uh, high cholesterol or hyperlipidemia, obesity, smoking, smoking and vaping, huge risk factors for Alzheimer's disease. Alcohol and substance abuse, another risk factor. Poor quality sleep. So if you have a difficulty with sleep, get to a sleep doctor. If you've got sleep apnea, which is very common, that's a risk factor for cognitive impairment. High levels of depression or anxiety are risk factors. Treatments available, hard of hearing, hearing loss, visual impairment. People who can't hear or can't see, it confuses the brain, they're at higher risk for dementia. A more recently identified risk factor, which is hard to modify, is air pollution. They're called aluminosilicates. Polluted air has certain chemicals that are neurotoxic, that are bad for the brain. In fact, that's amazing data some of it is coming from Finland, showed that the more of these lifestyle things one can do, you can actually overcome genetic vulnerability to Alzheimer's disease. But it's not easy. People have to be motivated. And every one of these requires some effort and some motivation, but it can really pay off down the road.